Yep. No mix. So we're making the rounds today. Uh, we're hitting up the nuke yards. Uh, this has probably been the fourth or fifth time that we've uh, filled these pails on these nukes. So they're starting to get full, but they need a little bit more. Now these little pails are nice and convenient because they fit nice and neat and tight over top of these nukes. Uh, but you know, they're small, they're about a gallon, so we gotta make a a few more rounds to build to, to fill them up to be able to get the syrup down into them. So we're also setting out some open feed. Carrie's setting out a couple totes over there just to help uh, bring in more syrup a lot quicker here to bulk these colonies up uh, before October. October is kind of like my um, my benchmark. We've got to have these hives set up by October. You never know what kind of weather is coming in October. It could be snowy, cold weather. These colonies will, you know, set up in a little tight winter cluster and they'll have trouble breaking cluster to take down the syrup and more importantly, cure it. So we always try to take advantage of the warm days that uh, sometimes September gives us to be able to end the amount of bees in these colonies. There's still summer bees in these colonies. So we're making use of this big population to be able to uh, take that syrup carrot and uh, store it away for winter. So we're on our second feed round. Um, we're in our second uh, semi load of syrup. So they are bulking up, they're fill filling up, they're coming up to wait. Uh, next week and the week after that, we'll go around and top up anything that's a little bit light and carry forward from there. So you can see these guys are a little bit excited. Now we dropped some syrup into the yard and just kind of woke them up. Uh, which is positive. These guys are hungry. They're ready to store food away for winter. I've gone through, I've done my mite wash in this yard and found one mite in the shake. So that's positive. There's not a lot there. And they're taking these pails down quite quickly, which is extremely reassuring. You always know when they're setting themselves up for winter that they're probably in pretty good shape. I certainly have a lot of activity in this yard. That little bit of syrup that dumped onto that cluster as we tipped the pail down uh, sure excited the nests. So they are woke up and they are ready to take on the day. So I'm digging into a yard that is still brood rearing. These guys have open brood. They're looking all right. Okay. 
one of my bee yards that's on the edge of the apiary. So I have neighboring beekeepers that way and a neighboring beekeepers that way. About two miles away, I figure. I'm not sure if there's any closer yards, but I know that I'm at the edge of my so-called territory, which I typically run. So I just have to be vigilant on making sure what is going on here hasn't been influenced on what's going on out there. I also have to be responsible enough to make sure what's going on here doesn't influence what's going on out there. Because bees will mingle two miles. You get yards closer in a mile then it becomes a lot more troublesome. One, two, three, four, five. So I have five mites in this wash. This has been randomly uh, surveyed through this yard. So I've pulled from about 10 hives. I'll have roughly 100, 150 bees. So I'm looking at levels that are, you know, at that threshold to above that threshold mark, which has got me concerned. So I have to act on managing the mite loads within this yard. So I'm thinking, uh, because it's on the edge of my apiary, uh, because I'm not sure what's going on in the surrounding yards, that, and I'm finding an abnormally high level of mites in this yard, as compared to everything else I'm, I have in my uh, apiary, uh, that I have to take serious attention to those varroa mites in this yard. So I'm going to not wait until the oxalic acid later on the fall when these guys have hatched out. These guys are still brooding. Um, so I have to act in a different manner, which is Apivar. I'm going to be putting strips in this yard, uh, if not this afternoon, or tomorrow. I might actually come back this afternoon and drop strips into this yard. And that'll help uh, control those mites uh, that's within these hives right now, and it'll help um, manage the mites that might be coming into these uh, hives. As these hives are fairly strong, they might be going out to the surrounding uh, apiary and which is maybe crashing and bringing the mites back. So I have to make sure as the mites come back in that they get killed off. My best option to do that would be with Apivar. So that's the plan and we'll just see how it works out. After we get the strips put in, we are going to assess probably mid-October, uh, later October pull the strips, do a wash just to see if we are able to manage the mites and then take it from there. I'm not seeing any evidence of deformed wing virus or any type of pupae pulled out of the hive. Uh, there's none of that. There isn't any crashes going on within this yard yet. Just the occasional drone layer. But uh, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna act, yeah. I found the mite issue and I have to act on it right now. So we come right back with strips. We're going to drop into these colonies. Uh, we did some washes and we're looking at about uh, five and a half, six percent mite counts in this yard. So I have Carrie working behind with strips. I'm just putting two per colony. These are Apivar strips. I'm working ahead, flipping the pails off and opening the lids and then I'm going to come back behind and uh, close up these colonies. So it should be pretty quick work. So it's not good that we found a high mite count, but it in a way is a little bit reassuring because of all the yards we've gone through, um, shaking bees from practically every yard, not finding any mites. You start to question whether or not your uh, monitoring uh, procedure is actually working. And obviously it is because we come to a yard that uh, has a, a level of mites and our testing showed just as it's supposed to. So we, act, we react and act. We're going to leave these in till middle of October and we'll pull them out 
We'll try to find a nice day. We'll pull them out before they hit the shed. We'll do a count of that time just to see if these strips have worked. And that's basically all we can do. We'll probably hit these guys with oxalic acid vapor also. But we have to make sure that we cover our bases and we hit them with the big guns every time. If there's a problem, we gotta slap it down.